welcome back to another video. My name's Olivia and I'm the content creator at Wilkinson Cameras. Today we're in Southport uh, reviewing, or should I say testing, the new Sony FE 24-50 f2.8 G lens. This is not a G Master lens, but today I'm going to compare it, well some shots compare it to the 24-70 f2.8 GM Mark II lens in the vicinity of 24 to 50, so we've got a fair shot against this focal range. The way to look at it, if you want something compact, something for traveling, because obviously you've got the 24 mil, which it will be great for landscape shots, and something that's a little bit more budget friendly for Sony glass, then this is a lens for you. Yeah, you don't have the 50 to 70 on a standard 24 to 70, which is a lens that I absolutely love, but I think for someone that maybe has invested in third-party lenses and do want to try the Sony glass because you've got Sony cameras, then this might be the lens that would get you into that system. So like I mentioned, the lens has actually already come out. So today, instead of giving you a heavy specs full lens review, I'm going to put it more into use, see what we can get with it, how far we can push it, and I'm mainly going to focus on cinematic footage. Why? Well, because I think this lens will be very popular for videographers, especially people that use it on a gimbal because it's super compact and relatively well balanced. So hopefully today I can get quite a lot of cinematic footage and we can really see how well this lens performs. Okay, so I've got a few shots on the 2450. Uh, I'm now going to compare it to the 2470 f2.8 GM Mark II lens. This is G Master glass, so this is Sony's very top quality of lens glass. And this is a G lens. So quality wise, the G Master is going to be better, um, but I'm going to do some comparisons in the vicinity of the focal length 24 to 50 on the 2470. So we can get a true comparison and see how the quality differs between the two lenses, obviously G Glass, G Master Glass. After reviewing the images side by side, I think it's safe to say that G Master is sharper corner to corner than the G lens, but that doesn't mean that it's still not incredibly sharp. The 24-50mm f2.8 G lens is a very capable lens and produces incredibly sharp images. So for someone that is thinking of buying into the Sony lineup and dream of owning Sony's very high-end glass, then know that G lenses are still very, very good and are a relatively affordable option. The autofocus is very fast and accurate. I didn't struggle with this at all in both stills and video. You can see here the AF is very responsive and does in fact cling to my eye. For bokeh, it's lovely and smooth, giving you that really subtle depth of field. The shape is again very pleasing. So the main difference between the build quality of the 2470 GM and the 24-50 G lens is on G Master Glass you tend to get an iris lock but you also get, well depending on which lens it is, you get the smooth and tight switch which is really really good and I use that all the time when I've got my 24-70. On the G Glass you don't have an iris lock switch, you do have a aperture D-click switch which again is handy for both videographers and photographers. So yeah that's the main difference in the build quality and design. On here you've only got one custom switch which is next to your AF MF switch. Then you've got your aperture ring, you've got your focal zoom ring and then you've got a manual focus ring there at the bottom. And that's the main differences between the two. On the G Master you get two custom switches, iris lock, also an aperture D-click switch which again is great for videographers and photographers. And yeah, that's the main differences between the two. This lens has a 67mm filter thread and today I've got the ProMaster Variable ND filter on because the lighting is very harsh, it's very bright, which is new for us on Wilkinson cameras because usually it's raining, uh, so I'm very grateful. 
but the ND filter will allow me to control the exposure better on the video footage. With the f2.8 aperture, it means I can get more of like a depth of field and a bit more creative because today my aim is to get some really nice cinematic footage and so far, so good. So yeah, let's, let's go. So a good tip for street photography and street video is to pretend that you don't know what you're doing because most of the time you're po pointing a camera at someone's face and you can see that they either one look uncomfortable or two notice that you are pointing a camera at their face but I think the most important thing to do is just pretend that you don't know what you're doing and just continue shooting and just like that people will crush your footage but that's street photography so it's all good. <laughs> So I've actually quite enjoyed using the focal length of 24 to 50 because it makes you think a bit more about your composition and I've not actually felt the need to be that bit closer. I don't know whether that's just because I'm focusing more on video rather than photo and I don't feel like in video you really do need that extra focal length, just move your body and actually do the work. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get a mixture of establishing shots and close-ups Obviously with a 2450 you are restricted to how far you can get close up to something or someone. There is a bird up there in the little hut and I know that if I had like a 70 to 200 I can get a lot closer to that and it would add some more context to the, what I'm shooting. But 2450 makes you think a bit more about your composition and I do actually quite enjoy the focal length. <laughs> So I've just tested the breathing compensation and it is actually quite good. This camera, I've got the A7C Mark II, has breathing compensation built into the camera so that completely wipes out any form of breathing compensation that the lens might have. But I have tested it with that turned off and there is some, especially at the 50mm end, but it's not very distracting. I did just test it out on Ella in the background and it was very minimal. So. That is a thumbs up from me. Okay, so that's it for today's video. What do we think of the very controversial 24-50 f2.8 G lens? A lot of people are asking the question of why does it exist, but I think if you want compactness, something a bit more affordable for Sony glass and a constant f2.8 aperture, then this lens might be for you. Also, if you're a videographer that uses a lot of gimbal work, then this, especially with the A7C Mark II, would be a very great um, kit choice because as you can see it's very balanced, even in one hand, so on a gimbal it would be absolutely perfect. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to our channel. Let us know what you think in the comment section. I'm, I don't know, at first when I found out that Sony are bringing this lens out I was a bit like, but why when you've got the 2470 and other amazing lenses that Sony have because they've got so many. But I think, like I said before, compactness, affordability and a constant f2.8 aperture. Obviously there's other amazing features that this lens provides, but they're probably the main three. So yeah, just let us know what you think in the comment section. So yes, I'll see you in the next video.